We have all seen very interesting visualizations of complex socioeconomic data in newspaper and scientific articles. I'm Dr. Serafim Alvanides, and today I'm going to show you how we can download data from Eurostat and also proceed to mapping them um, in a geographical information system. The steps we're going to follow is, first of all, we're going to understand why we are interested in mapping data as social scientists. Secondly, where we can get hold of this data. And thirdly, how we can proceed to mapping them. And I'm going to use urbanization as a case study. Starting with why we may be interested in mapping data. First of all, we usually want to know where we are located. And secondly, we want to know where we're going or where we're coming from. We have all used open tools like OpenStreetMap or Google Maps to try and understand where we are in a city or how to go from A to B. However, as social scientists, we're interested not only in locations, but in patterns. Starting with patterns then, in uh, European cities, we have here a map of aerial units. They are called nomenclature aerial units for Europe, and they are statistical units that Eurostat is using to present data sets. We can see a pattern of population density, we can identify the major cities in Europe, and we can also identify the rural areas that are less populated. However, there is other, another way to produce this map. For example, here we can see a visualization with points and the darker areas, i.e. the areas that have more red, is where the population is actually concentrated, while the less Densely populated areas are shown in white, and these are the rural areas across Europe. So trying to understand why we map, The Economist ran in 2010 a special issue on the data deluge. There is so much data, especially socioeconomic data, coming our way as social scientists, and one way to visualize it is through graphs and interesting visualizations. Another way to visualize it is through, is through maps. Maps are tools that people can understand very easily and they can identify patterns on them and we can communicate better. We see here an example of a complex table. It shows life expectancy across Europe. It shows different countries and different years. And to be able to identify the pattern in this table would be very difficult through, uh, with the eye. Therefore, it may be straightforward to map it. One way to map it would be to produce some sort of graph on top of a map, as we see here with these black circles. However, it's still very complicated to identify the areas with the highest and lowest life expectancy. On this map, we can see very easily the areas with a life, high life expectancy in green and the areas with a lower life expectancy in yellow, and we can identify a, a west-east divide in terms of life expectancy in Europe. Moving on to how we can actually map, there is a whole range of tools available and an increasing number of apps and websites. And I'm showing you here an example from Eurostat where you can select your variables, for example, life expectancy, as we saw earlier, or density of population and produce very simple maps. These are very simple tools to start exploring data and ideas. But in most cases, social scientists will want to download their own data sets or analyze their data and then proceed to mapping them in their own geography. So if we want to map our own data using a tool, we can use what we call a geographical information system. There are proprietary GIS and there are also open source GIS around. One of the highly recommended geographical information system is what we call QGIS. And you can see here the most recent version is Zanzibar. QGIS, interestingly, every different version is named after a town or a city around the world. What is important to remember before we start mapping data is that they come in two major forms. There is the tabular data that we saw earlier, various tables, they look like Excel files, and there's also the geographical data. These are the points or the boundaries for the aerial units we want to analyze. These two data sets come together 
through some sort of common identifier. Usually it's a city name or a city code or an aerial unit or a neighborhood code, etc. Another distinction of data is in terms of layers. Computers can only understand in very simplistic terms complex data sets. And the geographical information systems can only understand data sets in terms of layers. We can see here layers such as roads or aerial units or neighborhoods or points of interest. So the distinction we make in our mind is data as points or as lines, for example, streets or as aerial units, for example, whole countries or neighborhoods or regions. Moving on to sources of European data, uh, the Commission has its own geographical information system, mostly to download data, also sometimes to map data in very simplistic terms. And you can see here that there's a whole range of data sets that we, we should be able to download. So starting with points of interest, for example, airports or ports, areas of interest, for example, the NATS data we mentioned earlier, the statistical aerial units, or whole countries. The example I'm going to use here has to do with urbanization, so we're interested in mapping urbanity or degree of urbanization for smaller geographical areas than countries. You can see here that the data is reported at the NATS level for statistical aerial units, and it comes in different scales. It comes in a 1 to 1 million scale or 1 to 3 million scale. We don't need to worry about the scale at the moment because the scale is given by Eurostat. We also don't need to worry too much about the different data files and different data types because most GIS can these days recognize different styles and different data types. For this particular case study focusing on, urbaniz on urbanization, we're going to download the data from 2018 and from 2014 at 1 to 1 million scale so that they are comparable and the data files are going to be shape files. This is a common data type used across various geographical information systems. So here, first of all, we start by identifying the areas that we're interested in, downloading the data, they come in zipped form. Then we move on to unzipping the data, as we call it, or extracting it in Windows. And this generates a whole set of files. Once the data is downloaded and unzipped, we should be able to open QGIS and then load the two different data sets in QGIS. They appear as aerial units, there's thousands of them, and in order to visualize them we have to apply some sort of color scheme. The color scheme we apply here is a red, orange, yellow, because we have three different types of areas in our data set. With red we show the cities, the major cities, with orange we show the towns surrounding the cities or in rural areas, and with yellow we show the vast rural areas that have relatively low population density. Starting with 2014, we can see very easily the cities in red. They tend to concentrate in the southern parts of the UK and in the major cities around Europe. We can identify here France and some urban areas in southern Spain, as well as in the Scandinavian countries. Moving on to 2018, the map doesn't look significantly different to the naked eye. We can still identify the major urban areas in the southern part of the UK, in France and in southern uh, Spain. The two maps from 2014 and 2018 show us that we can map in very simple terms degree of urbanization in the EU. However, if we want to analyze them properly, we need to perform what we call map algebra. This involves merging the two different data sets and then subtracting the areas that have high degree of urbanization in 2018 compared to 2014. This is a topic for future discussion. What we learned in this video is why social scientists may be interested in mapping data, how we can proceed to finding data, socioeconomic data, in Eurostat, how we can then map them in very simple terms, and what we can do next. 
If you're interested in finding out more, the GIS of the Commission is a very good source of um, reference. You can read there the very basics of geographical information systems and the kind of data Eurostat provides. Eurostat also has the annual yearbook where they disseminate the various data sets. And you can also follow the two articles that I'm providing here that show examples of how we can make complex analysis with geographical information and socioeconomic data sets. Click on the links on the description boxes to find out more. This video is produced by the Consortium of European Social Science Data Archives. For more information on CESTA, please visit www.cesta.eu.